Hey, this is Dvir from the Cryptosphere and I'm going to do a review of an Israeli ICO uh, called Dove Network. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm Israeli as well. So that's kind of cool to see some innovation going on in the holy land. And Dove Protocol is trying to do something very ambitious. Uh, I like their idea and it's very futuristic. They're trying to create a uh, global transportation protocol for autonomous vehicles. So they're really thinking ahead into the future. So before we get started, I'd just like to do a quick financial disclaimer. This is not financial advice in any way, shape or form. Investing in ICOs, cryptocurrencies is incredibly risky. You can lose most or all of your money. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not a financial advice. You do your own research and read the disclaimer for more information. Okay, fantastic. So now the idea itself is what's happening right now with blockchain is that in, and there's two things that are happening. So we have on one side, we have this blockchain kind of, um, revolution that kind of comes in and change everything suddenly you don't need the middleman right so companies like uber and airbnb are theoretically can be replaced with protocols and i'm saying theoretically because the technology is very early stage right now so you have this and then on the other hand you have the trend that we're going to have autonomous vehicles driving vehicles and drones and boats coming up in the future it's in the next uh, few years I, I believe even in the next five years i think right now in san francisco you can already see autonomous driving cars so that is really cool and in the future what's going to happen is a lot of cars are going to be autonomous so what's going to happen is you're going to go to work and then your car is going to be sitting in place for nine hours and then it's not going to do anything so at this point what they're doing is you can sort of license your car out you can put it on the dov network the dov network and then they can um you can rent it and then it can drive people around so kind of like uber but uber right now needs humans to drive it but in the future it won't need them so this is an awesome idea and um, they, they, uh, yeah, they done a really good job explaining it and the design of the website. I, I've watched these guys closely for two and a half months now. They've been doing a good job with their uh, marketing and just, yeah, just the business side of things. So I've been continually impressed. Now they, they put an emphasis on autonomous vehicles. Again, like I said, thinking very futuristic. And even if you're a taxi driver, uh, before you have autonomous vehicles, you can, you can basically join the dev network and then you can connect and find via and find uh, customers in the area so it's not going to be a problem like right now with uber i think you need to go through some certification uh, process i think with dev network it's going to be easier i'm not exactly sure this is kind of me just guessing here so i might be wrong on that so that's the idea i'm not going to dive deeper you can read on on their website if you want to find out more honestly the information is already out there but i like to cover kind of like the grand vision of what they're trying to achieve and then i like to focus on the team and the advisors and the roadmap and the token metrics to see if, if they can actually execute and if this has good potential uh, from an investor's point of view so uh, the ico details is it's going to ico in two weeks and the token price is going to be roughly five cents they're going to raise almost 40 million dollars they already sold uh, 14 million on the the pre-sale they have a total of almost two and a half billion tokens and they're selling only 40 percent of tokens why only 40 percent why they cannot have better token metrics um i wish some company would just be like boom you know 70 percent token sale uh, tokens sold in the ico that would be so much better so yeah the token metrics i mean it puts them in the valuation of a hundred million dollars right off the bat so i don't know how much i like that i think that is too ambitious then again like they're releasing their main product later this month but you have to keep in mind that this is an experimental technology and these guys have been around for like what like 10 months eight months so i think a hundred million valuation right off the bat is kind of a big deal uh, i don't like it now also keep in mind that a lot of people invested in the pre-sale roughly a third of the money went into the pre-sale and the private sale so obviously they had some bonus i couldn't find the bonus information for you guys i'm sorry so they had some bonus so keep in mind like you're investing in the valuation if you're investing it with other bonus you're investing um like you're gonna have like the ico the previous participants that had a better deal than you so you're getting kind of the worst deal it might be a good deal if this will do well when it hits exchanges right but but i mean from from an investor point of view like you kind of wish you had gotten in before okay so the the roadmap they have a prototype and they're going to release they're going to launch the product uh, this month or maybe they already did so as you can see here in april network launch 
I'm not exactly sure what it means. It's a bit hard to understand. You know, they have like a drone charging service launch, drone fl uh, flight planning service launch. Then they have the token sale. Then they have first vehicle charging negotiated and completed autonomously. So that's the first time it's going to happen. First autonomous boat mission completed on the dev network, so they're gonna introduce the boats. So I guess the the main net is kind of like second quarter. So sometimes in the next uh, three months it's gonna come out, which is pretty soon. And then they have plans to expand. Let's see, decentralized discovery, decentralized communication. Yeah, so they have a lot of work in, ahead of them, and uh, yeah, so this is. What they're trying to do requires a lot of work. Setting up all these different uh, factors together, I'm sure they're dealing with so many things that I cannot even think of right now. So, a very ambitious project. This is why I'm kind of skeptical about this big evaluation right off the bat, because I would like to see them prove themselves. You know, I think that a good ICO, when they're doing it, they believe in the product long term, so they wouldn't need that much money. I mean, $40 million is a lot of money. It really is. So, I just don't understand why why I do it, you know. It's just you could do well with 30 million, you know, like why why do you need 40? Why not 25 million? Why are these huge valuations? I mean, people try to start companies that will be worth 10 million dollars or even 5 million dollars. So they're trying. So they're already raising 40 million right off the bat. Again, I wish it was better, but I'm going to stop uh, complaining about that. And OK, so the team is good. I like that. I like what they're doing. The thing is they have no previous blockchain experience. So the founder Noam uh, Coppel, he created in 2003 the world's first smartphone encryption system, uh, which is pretty cool. Innovator. Uh, Tal Atel is the CTO, was a previously R&D director and VP of product at Somoto. So Somoto, let me pull it up for you. They have like 50 something employees on LinkedIn. So it's a mid-sized company. Uh, Specializing in all aspects of worldwide monetization and distribution of model and PC applications as well as video advertising. So it was an advertising company. So this is a different background than what they're doing right now with uh, with Dev, excuse me. So this is kind of different, right? This is advertising industry and now he's going into the blockchain industry. So he's a smart guy, smart guy, but I like again, they're not coming from relevant um, industries. Let me see what Noam was doing before that. Strong emphasis in blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and encryption. Well, it should be good in, in encryption, right? Cryptocurrencies, that's what it built on, on encryption. So that, that's somewhat related. Let me see what he did before that. So before that, he ran for 13 years Gold Lock Sigilo. Oh, no, it's not it's not uh, correct. So he was a co-founder at Meta Cafe. Then he was a founder at VidPay. Okay, so he ran like a small size mobile encryption software company, right? Then Meta Cafe. So he's a very smart guy, right? You see, he has like 21 employees for another company that he founded. What were they doing? Video First entertainment destination solely dedicated to showcasing the best videos. Okay. And then VidPay is a marketing platform that creates minimal, meaningful relationships between brands and social influencers. So you see, this is, it's a little bit all over the place, which is fine. Um, so he ran the gold lock thingy company for like two years. So he has, he knows what he's doing when it comes to, uh, encryption, but no direct, uh, uh, blockchain experience. Now we have here someone who's from the Ethereum Foundation, formal external relations lead for the Ethereum Foundation. Foundation. So he was a member also of DevCon 3, which is a competition for hackers, which is pretty cool. Now, so he doesn't seem like he was part of the development team. He looks like he was part of relations kind of business dev for Ethereum. So I think it's, I wouldn't count this really as blockchain experience. It's impressive, but I wish he was like a core Ethereum developer. Now we have here another, uh, Tong Chan, who was a former general counsel for the Ethereum Foundation. So also again, uh, related to Ethereum, which is cool, but no direct experience coding in Ethereum. And, uh, yeah, let me see if there are other, uh, let me see if there's anyone else. No, those are the four people that kind of caught my attention. The other guys look smart, but I think this guy also had something for him. Previously business solutions manager at Variant Systems in Singapore. Okay, cool. No, no nothing that really stands out. So yeah, that, that's the team, uh, which is kind of funny because the, I thought that they, the advisors were more impressive. Let me see. Yeah, guys. Um. 
I wasn't that impressed with people on the team. I looked all of them up. And this guy is also a founder of a cryptocurrency exchange for Africa, which is pretty cool. I don't know. 